India. I've been here in the United States for only about six hours and already I can feel a sense of fleeting I can feel the sense of need that I felt was there and the sense of despair and the suffering and the poverty those the things that deeply affected me inside, I can feel them moving away very quickly. And uh, I was reading a book called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Very interesting book. Uh, I suggest you read it if you have not. And uh, in there he was talking about how humans are very context sensitive creatures and when I came back here to the US in just the the short six hours that I've been here um, I recognized how pristine, how new, how law-abiding how many rules there are. Everything seems so orderly. Um, there isn't a real sense of of, uh, of need. You know, everybody here has everything they need and they do things like water skiing um, in their spare time. When, you know, people in, in India are just scraping by to feed themselves. Um, I mean, sure, there's people here in the United States that are doing that, that need to do that as well, but, you know, it, it's, it's not on the same scale as, there, as, as it is in India. I mean, in India, I think there's, there's something like 500 million people, half the population of India, that is below the poverty line. Um, <clears throat> and I was just thinking about how the context, you know, the context in when I was in India was much different than it is now. And now that I'm surrounded by, you know, everything that I could possibly need, I'm no longer feeling that sense of urgency. I'm no longer feeling that sense of despair, that sense of, uh, you know, I have to do something to fix the problems in the world, or I have to do something to figure out how I can help make the world a better place. Um, I mean, I know that need is still there. India is still there. All those people that are suffering that I saw are still there. They're still suffering. But, you know, it doesn't... It, it feels so far away. I mean, it may as well be another planet. It was only 36 hours ago that I was in India. And now I'm in, you know, a place that... It's, it's just... It's hard to explain how... How... Uh, so it's been about two weeks since uh, I recorded the video that you just saw, and a lot has happened in those two weeks in terms of my perception of life and the way that I'm perceiving the things around me. Um, I felt a, a very strong sense of that need running away or leaving me uh, shortly after I arrived and now it's I feel like I'm chasing it and that it's going you know that it's way far away in the distance and um, it's it's still I'm still having a, a hard time adjusting and, and wrapping my head around the um, the extreme context switch, the extreme difference. And as I was saying in the previous video, uh, what I was reading in Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point, that humans are very context sensitive creatures, meaning we're very sensitive to our environment. Our environment does a lot of things to us that are extremely subtle. On a very subtle level, there's a lot of changes that you know we just go with, we don't really recognize. And I was I think because I read that book on my way back here two weeks ago, I was prepared to watch for those subtle things, and that's 
mainly what my last blog post was about, the uh, homesick and estranged and privileged land. And this still feels like a very strange and very privileged land. And the day that I came back, um, my dad made tea and I remember looking at the cups when he put them on the table and feeling like these cups were huge. And they were the same exact cups that, you know, I had used for years before I left, whenever I had tea with my dad. And they never looked big then. And I had asked him, are these new cups? Because they really look three times the size. And I realized it's because for the six months I was in India, I did not see one cup that was bigger than this. All the cups were at, at, at most of this big. And now when I come to the U.S., the regular sized cups are, you know, three times as big as that. And... Two weeks later, they look like regular cups again. And now I have to really think back to, wow, they really looked that big before? Because now they don't. Now they look regular size. And that's just an example of, of, of how a lot of these, uh, these changes and these effects are starting to become normal. They're starting to become, you know, something I can take for granted. And I don't want to take them for granted, and I'm working hard not to take them for granted, but it's, uh, another, another story I could share with you that also really, um, speaks to this same experience was I grew up in this incredible yard with, you know, an incredible lake here, and, you know, it's just absolutely beautiful place place to swim, nice green grass, mostly green, and um, I never felt very lucky or very fortunate for it because I always had it growing up. But as soon as I left and I lived on my own in a thousand dollar a month apartment, tiny apartment in, you know, expensive Boston, and I came back here on the weekends to visit. I started to feel a sense of, wow, you know, this is an incredible place. I'm so lucky to have this. And that feeling hasn't left me. And, you know, it's been probably six, seven, eight years maybe now that after having felt that. And that feeling is still there. I still feel extremely fortunate, extremely grateful, even more so now after having been, you know, through, through a couple of uh, developing countries. But the sense of gratitude is something that you have to consciously think about and it's it comes down to living in the moment um, being aware of the present if you're constantly aware of the present and you're aware of everything that you have that you know you should be grateful for you should be um, feeling fortunate to have you automatically develop a, a sense of gratitude that really changes the way you perceive the world, the things around you, the problems, your stress, um, disagreements or arguments with others. They don't feel as, you know, they don't feel as important because you realize that there are so many other things that are a lot more important. That's one thing I love about minimalism is that when you strip away everything that's not essential, automatically all the things that are essential, that are important, stand out and they become obvious. I don't think that everybody needs to become a minimalist to feel that. I think that if everybody practices living in the moment, practices being present and being aware of your environment and your context and how that is influencing the way you feel, that you will discover that suddenly you can appreciate things a lot more. So that's my one thought to leave with you is consider the context, consider your environment be present, always be thinking about everything that's around you that, you know, that you have, that you have available to you, you know, a flat floor. Something as simple as a flat floor to stand on is a little more comfortable than a, a rocky surface. Something as simple as that. Think about the context of everything around you all day. Okay? Thank you.